Hi there, this uh, little video is about phosphorylation and dephosphorylation of proteins and it's from the Advanced Higher Biology course and it covers part C of key area 2 but not all of part C, just the very last bit. I hope you find it helpful. What we're going to be looking at is explaining how the addition or removal of phosphate can change the conformation of a protein and it's important to know how this happens. So we're actually going to learn about the process of phosphorylation or dephosphorylation. Phosphorylation is adding the phosphate, dephosphorylation is removing the phosphate. So this is actually an example of post-translation modification um, and by adding or removing a phosphate from a protein, it changes how the R groups of the amino acids in that protein interact because we're actually going to um, increase the negativity of a protein or reduce it. So we're going to look at one enzyme or one group of enzymes called protein um, kinases. Now the protein kinases catalyze the transfer of phosphate from uh, a phosphate group to other proteins. Now, where it's uh, normally involved is the use of the ATP molecule. Now, you've heard that from National 5 and Higher Biology, ATP is that energy storing molecule. And you'll hopefully remember that the role of ATP is that when the last phosphate on the ATP molecule is released, energy is released. So when that bond breaks between the last two phosphates and one phosphate is released, energy is released. Now, in phosphorylation, when the last bond breaks and that phosphate is released, it's then joined onto the protein. So if we look down here, get myself a wee pen, we've got our protein here and it's not got a phosphate on it. And then through the action of protein kinase, we've got our ATP goes in and then ADP comes out and notice it is a shorter molecule. We don't have a phosphate here because the phosphate has been added on to our protein. Now, the second group of enzymes we're going to look at is protein phosphatases. These uh, are the enzymes that catalyze the reverse reaction. So the removal of the phosphate. So this is dephosphorylation. OK, so we've got our we'll start here, we've got a little cycle. We've got our protein there and it's got the P, so that's a, phos a, a protein with a phosphate on it. And then through the action of phosphatase, uh, we're going to remove that uh, phosphate and it becomes a protein. And that phosphate is actually going to join on to an ADP molecule, adenosine diphosphate. Um, so that ADP is going to pick up that phosphate and become ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now what's quite good about this diagram is although I've been explaining the dephosphorylation process, it actually so shows that it's a cyclical nature because it shows you the phosphorylation process because we've also changed my colour pen. We've also got our protein here through the action of protein kinase and our ATP is giving a phosphate over to turn into ADP, we then get our phosphorylated protein. Now, phosphorylation and dephosphorylation are very important in the regulation of a protein's activity because as soon as we add on a phosphate or remove um, a phosphate, it changes the conformation of the protein, which then, of course, changes the function and the activity of the protein. Uh, many types of proteins like enzymes or receptors are regulated in this way. They can be activated or deactivated uh, by the addition or removal of a uh, um, phosphate. So when a phosphate gets added to the protein, it actually adds a negative charge. So this is going to alter and disrupt uh, many ionic interactions in the protein. So any ionic interactions between the R groups of the amino acids are going to be affected by the addition of a negative charge. It might make one end of the protein um, more negative, meaning it's going to be more strongly at, um, attracted to a positive end of the protein, or it might make what was a positive end of a protein, negative, so it's actually going to be repelled away from another end of the protein. So we've got new ionic interactions and disrupted interactions. So it actually changes the conformational shape of the whole protein. 
So that's actually it for phosphorylation, dephosphorylation. It's a very small video in uh, comparison to my other advanced higher biology videos because we're at the summary point now. Um, and this is the bit where um, if you're in my class at school, you'd be maybe taking some notes. So feel free to pause the video and take your own notes uh, once I've summed it all up. Right, so reversal binding of phosphate and the control of conformation. The addition or removal of a phosphate can cause reversible conformational changes in proteins. This is a common form of post-translational modification. Protein kinases catalyze the transfer of a phosphate group to other proteins. And it's the terminal phosphate, the last phosphate of an ATP molecule that is transferred to a specific R group. Protein phosphatases catalyze the reverse reaction. So that's the removal of a phosphate, adding it onto an ADP molecule, adenosine diphosphate, to make it ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Phosphorylation brings about conformational changes, which will therefore affect a protein's activity. The activity of many cellular proteins, such as enzymes and receptors, are regulated in this way. Some proteins are activated by phosphorylations, while others are inhibited. Adding a phosphate group adds a negative charge, um, which therefore will change or disrupt ionic interactions in the unphosphorylated protein. Um, and this will bring around the conformational change. Now, I hope that has helped you uh, explain how the addition or removal of phosphate changes the protein conformation. And we've talked a bit about the process. Uh, short and sweet video in comparison to the other ones. Um, hope you enjoyed it.